Oh, my, just, ugh. We're not even at the end, dude. Here's we the thing. We can't be done right? right now. We've only had like one Twilight. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> um, okay. So, Eva's a witch now. We've only had one Twilight and you're already giving up? Come no, on. No, 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 okay, here's the thing, right? Uh-huh. Is... Everything that happened in that scene, with okay. the current rules that I have established for how I'm interpreting this story... Okay. ...is very easily just... <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Sure. But... But? But... First of all, it showed that Beatrice's new North Wind and the Sun strategy... Okay. If that's what that was, which it very much seemed like it was... Okay. sure. ...is going alright. I mean, they did clap. They which had, like, a, a moment together. Which is a concern. Sure, okay. That is a very big concern for me. Okay, cool. The other thing... ...is I am very scared... ...that Ava will just waltz into a scene with Battler... ...in as the new outfit as younger herself. <laughs> as younger herself. Is it the- <laughs> She waves her staff around and really, she just, like, hits him in the head with it a bunch of times. Like... That'd be great. If that happens... I'd be down for that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, but, yeah, so far... Bowser's been in the the guest room the entire time. Yeah, he hasn't seen any of this shit. So, and after like three straight episodes of Purgatory, we got like five minutes of it there. Yeah, um, yeah, we haven't seen Battler much at all. Well, that's fine. I guess we can just ignore those past three chapters because Battler wasn't in them. They're basically irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, the text on the door was red. Is this true? You think that means a red truth, like magical red truth? I'm concerned that it perhaps <laughs> does. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you have any evidence to support or to not support that any of that happened. Um, if you'd like to bring that up now. Otherwise, I say we we'll just keep going. Yeah, let's just gun it. Okay, let's go. Head first. Rosa returned to the lobby. It was still her turn to rest, but her expression made it look as though she couldn't sleep deeply with all this tension. All this tension? What? My, what? Like, oh my goodness. What could have happened? Also, only Rosa returned to the lobby. Yeah. What? Take it easy and lie down. Get this up and you'll have it pretty rough later on. Thanks for the concern. I just couldn't fall asleep. I've already taken a shower, so I'm good for now. The next person can rest. What about you two? Kyrie-san, Rudolf-san. What will we do, Rudolf-san? Shall we rest? You can rest. I'll stay awake. It's the only manly thing I can do right now. Then I'll stay awake. Staying awake with my husband is the only womanly thing I can do right now. <laughs> you two truly are close. Oh, they're gonna die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you should talk. <laughs> Seems Ava and Hideyoshi sound they're out cold. They're out cold. It appears that unlike Rosa, they can't fight against their age. It's not in response to those words. The door to the hall clunked open. Ava and Hideyoshi returned from the guest room. See, they're in the guest room. Just then. That's none of your business. Oh, Rosa, you sure you don't need to rest yet? You should talk, Nesan. Why not take it easy and sleep? <laughs> that was an uncomfortable pause. That really was. <laughs> I just... I just can't get to sleep. Taking a shower shook my drowsiness off. Rudolf Kyrie-san, you can rest if you want. Oh my god, they're just going around in circles. Sure, thanks. Well, for now, let's say I appreciate the sentiment. Why don't you go first, Aniki? How kind of you, but I cannot rest first. Oh my god. <laughs> Nobody wants to go to bed first. <laughs> this is the most I can do as the oldest brother right now. <laughs> do not worry, the two of us will stay awake until the very end. How long will this charade go on? <laughs> More importantly, Evane san are you okay? You look a little pale. Come to think of it, you're right. Hmm. Could it be a bit of a fever? Hideyoshi put his hand up against Ava's forehead. It seemed that Ava wasn't feeling her best. That goes without saying. That's what happens when you break your sleep cycle at your age. Uh, you know, maybe six people die. Yeah, it's fine. It it's happens. It's just, it's just pff, totally normal. I mean, they didn't Is it die, right? Is it a cold? Yeah, they're just faking. Or sick. Natsuhi, can you call Dr. Nandrew then? Yes. I'm fine, you don't have to make such a fuss over it. I have some medicine, so I'll be okay. I tend to get fevers when I'm tired. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Hey, son, take it easy, okay? Thank you. If the sibling- Music. If the siblings gathered without me around, 
I get the feeling everyone would start talking behind my back. <laughs> it's a persecution complex from long ago. Sorry, okay? I won't say anything. Except I'd say bad things about you behind your back, Nesan. Hmm. What is it? Nesan, you've been acting strange for a while. What? I don't know, this is very strange. It's almost like those events never happened. I know. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Maybe they're just good at acting? I don't know. That's what- that's my concern. Is this, is this like- is this the Which plan? Which one is it? <laughs> is this the plan that they came up with or something? Shouldn't you get a little rest now? You're right. Just thinking about raising money by March makes my headache hurt even worse. Ooh, that's explicit. Oh, it's in bold too! Ava! That isn't good. Rest. And I'll hold back too so that your headache doesn't get worse. I've had a bad headache myself for a while now. Thank you. Well then, I'll take those words to heart and rest for a while. What is it, Ava? Why so angry all of a sudden? Sorry, please, let us rest a bit longer. Sorry, sorry. After apologizing several times, as though praying, Hideyoshi followed Ava out of the lobby. That is an interesting phrase. He just apologized to some kind of godlike figure, it's fine. I don't <laughs> like this atmosphere. It's all so strange. That's no surprise. There was a murder early this morning. See, Kyrie gets it. Yeah, Kyrie gets it. And since then, we've been eating canned food and carrying guns around. Kyrie gets it. It's natural that we start to build up stress. I wonder if the kids up there are building up stress too. I'm worried about Maria. She tends to throw tantrums at times like this. At that moment, they heard the sound of wild footsteps coming from the second floor. Wild. Yeah. The guest house wasn't a cheap building, so they would not wouldn't normally have heard the sound of footsteps. But, you know, nine-year-old children, they can create a racket. They can really hammer that home. It was like the sound of someone stamping their feet in frustration. Like. Like Maria. Yeah. Here we go. And an instant later, accompanied by what seemed to be the sound of her running out into the second floor hallway, they could hear Maria calling, ew, 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 over and over again, sounding displeased. Rosa grabbed her head, her hair flying, and she voicelessly moaned in anguish. The adults conscientiously turned their backs to her, pretending not to notice. <laughs> oh my god. The noisy clamor came from the second floor and flew into the lobby. It was Maria, who was sobbing along with the other children and Naranjo. In other words, they had all come downstairs because of Maria's tantrum. Rosa couldn't hide her dizziness at this new annoyance her daughter was bringing to everyone. Sorry, Aunt Rosa. Oh, it's been so long. I know. Comrade Jessica is back. We're not. Uh, we tried to calm her, but she just wouldn't listen. Ew! 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 Wow! What is it, Maria? Could you be a little more quiet? Everyone's watching. Is that, it's that rose of hers from the garden. She suddenly started saying she was worried about it. I think she's half asleep. She suddenly woke up and started going on about how worried she was about that rose. Um, Maria-chan, calm down. That was just a dream. Ew! Ew! That rose belonged to Beatrice and me! So if I don't take care of it, Beatrice is gonna get mad! It might get snapped off again! Ew! Again? Again. Ew! Oh, wait, was it this episode we had the scene where she repaired it? Was that it must have been. It must have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she tied it with the gold That's the string. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I remember. Good thing I'm here. I'm telling you to quiet down a bit, okay? The sudden rise in the tone of Rose's voice surprised the children. But Maria's crying just grew louder, and her tantrum just grew fiercer. Oh, Rosa son, you mustn't scold a child so unsparingly. It's Nandro's turn. At times like this, it's best to give them some warm milk or something. Oh yes, children well do, known do for we being have cats. Any, do we have any milk for this little darling kitty? But please. Is there any here? <laughs> the milk we just had for breakfast is empty now. Those are anyone ever said if you saw <laughs> kids. Real off asking the real questions. You know those silver pale things. <laughs> I have some. Yes, I'll search for some now. What? Give it to Give them to her. She has pills to like quiet kids down. All right. Without hiding her displeasure, Rosa grabbed their handbag that had been set on the sofa and fished around for some medicine. Man. What? Wouldn't it be interesting if Why someone was thing? faking death in a crime scene and used <laughs> some sedative pill to make it seem like this they were would out? This would count as foreshadowing if you wanted somebody to be like playing dead. Yeah. This is true. It seems she had brought some child use sedatives for Maria's tantrums. 
Uh, it is only child use, but I imagine with enough of them you could affect an adult, maybe? Anyway. She found it and opened but the bottle. But then again. Yeah? No unheard if two poisons may be used. I mean, child use set of pills. We just been told about it. I don't know. It's I guess. Up to you, I guess. She found it and opened the bottle, but it must have been empty. Irritated, Rosa shook the bottle several times, but that didn't change the fact that nothing was in there. As she did that, Maria's crying grew ever more intense. The question is, is did she not have any, or are they put somewhere else? <laughs> it, you should also remember, Beatrice clarified the term death to mean that once they were killed, they could no longer do anything afterwards. So I think that would cover the use of sedatives, at least in, in this case. Um, so it might be worth thinking about that. She did say that they... <laughs> well, you have to dig up some red truths, I think. Well, no, 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 because she said that they suffered instant deaths, which means that they deaths. were no longer capable of doing anything after they were attacked. Yes. This is true. She did they say... might have played death and then been killed later, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's totally a possibility. Well, well, at, at the time of the red truths, they were all dead. Yes. I think that's what that means. At that time, Ava was lying on her bed, covered by the bedding. I don't think this sedative <laughs> thing has anything to do with the first one, because we kind of blew sure. that one open with the, like... Hmm whichever scene it was i forget i don't know what to call it but the purgatory scene where batless just wal waltzed all over beatrice it's true we kind of blew that one open i mean did he solve it though he proved it was possible which is what we're trying to do this is true okay we have that was one of the things that v vigilia came in and said is that it doesn't matter if we prove how it was done it's that we prove it was possible sure okay uh at that time Eva was lying on her bed covered by the bedding hideyoshi returned from the washroom folding a handkerchief soaked in water Oh, this is one nasty fever. I'll bet it's the poisonous air at this family conference that got you. For now, you can forget all about the other relatives, okay? As Hideyoshi spoke to her kindly, I had something in my mouth. He set the smoke soaked handkerchief on Ava's burning forehead. The Ava smoked. <laughs> the smoked. The smoked handkerchief is delicious as gunny. Tummy here. As long Ava... as you have salt. <laughs> Ava rested her own hand on top of his. This is a good moment. I shouldn't... My hand feels nice and cool. My hand feels nice. Your fever, fever must be pretty bad. Don't worry. The medicine will start working soon. Plus, my hand is a magic hand. I just put it against your forehead like this, and any fever will melt right away. You're right. Your hand always makes my fevers fade. Yep. No need for a doctor when you got my hand. Don't worry. Close your eyes. My magic will make that fever fade away. Yes, I know. I can feel your magic. You knew she was about to say it was just a placebo effect, but... He stopped. If Ava said she could feel magic coming from his hand, then that was fine for now. I think... I feel like this is Ava. Oh, no! I wonder if magic really exists. Yeah, it, it does. Only those who believe can tell, though. There's actually a lot of magic like that out there in the world. Magic actually exists, then. I wonder if witches really exist, too. Oh? You mean that witch of the forest, Beatrice? I think we got it backwards. Uh, Just like the yeah, gods. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think this is W. Yoshi. You mean that witch of the forest, Beatrice? She probably does exist for those who believe. Just like the gods, they don't show themselves except in front of those with strong faith. I did it too, you know. Long ago, I was able to use magic. Oh. Yeah. We... Really. The new witch too. I had dreams that I wanted to come true, no matter what. After wishing strongly and trying hard, they always come true without fail. My magic, my grades were always the best, and I even became the student council president and worked hard to get into the university I wanted. Everything I wished for was granted. That's right. Your magic was always a thing to be reckoned with. You're definitely a witch. You work harder than anyone. I know all about it. When I was a kid the whole time, there was another me inside myself who always supported me. That other self was a witch. I didn't believe in Beatrice. Fuck. Why, just show no. the sprites, man. Ugh. This is still over. Yeah. I didn't believe in Beatrice, the Witch of the Forest. I always believed that if a Witch of Rakenjima did exist, it was the Witch inside my heart. I was so grateful to that Witch inside myself. I was always grateful that she brought, brought me to you. You get too timid when you're sick. <laughs> Don't say anything for now. I'll say like this the whole time, until your fever's gone down. Yes, don't take your hand away, no matter what. Somehow I feel like I'm becoming something that isn't myself, and I've been scared for a while now. And I get the feeling the witch inside me was provoked by Beatrice and is growing stronger and stronger. Hold on a minute. 
Where was Ava stabbed in episode one? In the head, right? Yeah, she was stabbed in the head. Okay, just thought I'd throw that out there. Don't worry about it, it's not in the hand or anything. It's, don't worry about it. Somehow it feels like she's going to swallow me whole. It's okay. As long as I'm with you, there's nothing to be afraid of. Remember the time we went to that dangerous country and the whole bus got robbed? <laughs> yeah, you know, I that, drove them off. That dangerous country? Didn't you just hand over your gold watch and beg them to go away? <laughs> it was pretty lame, but it was cool. <laughs> Don't move your hand away, no matter what. Not even if I fall asleep, and if something creepy sneaks in here, protect me. <laughs> yep, leave it to me. That's why I'm telling you to stop worrying and get to sleep. Because the medicine and my magic will start working real soon. Ava finally calmed her heart and closed her eyes. Hmm. That time, there was the sound of a door being opened violently from the direction of the lobby. It seemed that Maria was having a tantrum, and screams of ooh could be heard, along with Rose's rebuking yells. That probably hurt Ava's ears, or maybe it was giving her a headache. Ava moaned as though in pain and buried herself in the covers. It was easy to guess what was happening. Maria had probably had a tantrum for some reason, gone down to the lobby, and started arguing with Rosa, who then scolded her daughter. And then, maybe that had got, gotten too embarrassing to be shown in front of the other relatives, so Rosa had taken Maria out into the corridor. Hideyoshi had no desire to butt in on Rosa and Maria's problem, but just for now, since Ava's condition was so bad, he wanted them to take their ruckus somewhere else. Wait just a sec. I'll ask him to keep it down. Come back quickly. Don't worry, I won't leave this room. Wait a minute, what? Hideyoshi removed the chain, opened the door, and stuck his face out into the corridor. He immediately met Rosa's gaze. Everything okay, Rosa-san? I'm sorry, did all the noise wake you? Ooh! 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 Wait, Chan, sorry. Aunt Ava isn't feeling well, and she's trying to sleep. Would you quiet down a little bit? Rosa's tone didn't change after Hideyoshi's request. She kept crying, ooh, and repeating, my rose, my rose. Rosa slapped Maria's cheek, lifted her up while covering her mouth, and dragged her towards the entrance, trying to at least put some distance between her and Hideyoshi's room. She would still probably be noisy for a while, but he had, he had warned Rosa for the time being. Relying on Rosa's actions as a mother, Hideyoshi closed the door. Is Maria Chan having a tantrum again? Looks like it. It's tough for Rosa Sound, too. Come to think of it, our George is almost too good to be true. We should be grateful. You're right. And... No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Look, it's the magic hand. He put his hand to Ava's forehead again. Maybe there really was magical power in that hand. The truly peaceful look rose to Ava's face, and bit by bit she began to drift off into the land of sleep. As he had promised, Hideyoshi kept his hand on her forehead. Uncomfortably long fades to black. Yeah. Little nervous. By the entrance, with her hands still against Maria's mouth, Rosa was at a loss at what to do next. She hadn't been able to withstand everyone's gazes in the lobby, and had yelled at the children to go upstairs, dashing out of the lobby. Then she'd gone out into the corridor, only to have Hideyoshi say that she was being too noisy. I should... Where should I go now? Should I take this child who's having a tantrum? She felt as though tears of frustration were about to come out. As Maria kept struggling in an attempt to scream, Rosa put her mouth up to Maria's ear and tried to persuade Maria in a properly calm voice. Maria, do you really want to see the rose that much? Maria nodded her head several times, moaning, Ooh. Why do you want to see it so much? I listen as your mother, so will you tell me quietly? I'll hit you if you scream. My rose. Peter's revived it. It might have snapped off again. I'm worried about that. I can't sleep until I'm sure. Apparently she was still upset about that marked rose from yesterday. Rosa felt her headache throbbing again, but she was at least a little relieved that Maria had now stopped her screaming. Anyway, everyone is having a hard time right now. Don't bother Mama and everyone else. You can worry about that rose all you want tomorrow when it stops raining. So for now, listen to me. No, 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 no. It's my Beatrice's rose. Ooh, ooh, where? Rosa reflexively covered Maria's mouth. She had spoken a little too harshly and gotten her agitated again. Rosa realized that it was partly her own fault and clicked her tongue in self-hatred. 
but Maria thought that was directed at her, and her crying grew even fiercer. Please, just be quiet. What can I do to make you stop crying? What can I do to make you listen to what your mama says? Uh, that was me, not Maria. I know. Suddenly, Maria stopped crying so fast that it seemed unnatural. And she turned around and muttered, Here it comes. If I get to see my rose, I'll stay quiet until tomorrow. Interesting audio cue. Really? Yes. If we go to the rose garden and see my rose, I'll calm down. Mother dearest. They gonna die. That's so creepy. Fucking, ugh. You know, I was actually really wondering, mm. while this scene was going on and we're talking about roses being blown away in the wind. Uh-huh. I really do wonder how strong of a typhoon this is, if they're all able to just run between the house and the guest house. Yeah, it's, it's weak enough that they can move between shelters fairly easily. Yeah. But strong enough that they can't go by boat. That's about what we know. And it's also um, like, um, you know, they might be on the outskirts of the typhoon, right? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, it's a weird, potentially magic typhoon that's fought up the island mm. for Beatrice's game. I don't know. Huh. I mean it, Mama. Mm. She's so cheery now. Interesting. Wonder if anyone was behind her. If it would keep Maria quiet for the time being, Rosa thought that even going out into this wind and rain would be a small price to pay. She thought it might be a bit reckless, but in the end, no murder or anything of the sort had actually occurred. All of that clamor since this morning had been a farce set up by Kinzo. If you carefully thought about that chain of closed rooms, it clearly had to all be an act. I guess they don't know that literally all of the keys are in the rooms. Yeah, they so. don't know everything. Um, yeah. Do you really listen if you get to see the rose? Yes. I mean it, Mama. Hee hee hee. Come on! Ouch! Maria, please! Rosa didn't overlook their creepy laugh and lightly hit Maria with her fist. And she shrugged, as though giving up. Understood. Oh, it's you. Understood. If it's just one look, then I'll agree. Will that work? Yes, Mama. I promise. <laughs> Maria, like, grabs Rosa's gun and just blasts her with it. Oh my god. Once again, Rosa tested the weight of her gun. It'll be okay. It's only an act. There's never a murder on this island in the first place. Damn it, wait, Anne Rosa! Ah! <laughs> Anne Rosa and Maria, the sacrifices for the second twilight. God damn it! Damn it, damn it. Someone notice them. Tell them to stop! What are those guys in the living room and us kids doing? <laughs> Indeed. They are being considerate of Rosa's pitiful relationship with her daughter and are forcibly changing the subject. The group that includes you went up to the second floor and is talking about something else while watching TV. You bastards! Someone noticed them! Who's the closest? Is it Uncle Hideyoshi? He's noticed the two are leaving through the front door. Ah! <laughs> it won't reach! It won't reach! <laughs> Don't disturb their precious time together. <laughs> Hideyoshi kept talking kindly, his hand on Ava's forehead. He didn't notice at all that Rosa and Maria were going outside to the front door. In that case, there was no way the others in the lobby, which was even further away, would notice. Much less those in the cousin's room on the second floor. <laughs> Why are you so panicked? Didn't you defeat me with that bold move saying that the culprit dies in an accident on the first twilight? <laughs> Doesn't that mean there's no longer a culprit on this island? <laughs> what is there to be so worried about? Now, the thing is, is it could either be <laughs> Rosa and Maria uh -huh. or Ava and Hideyoshi because they're also apart from everyone. It's true. There are two pairs that have been cut off, but we did have Ava and Hideyoshi in the first the first game, so, I don't know, will we see a repeat? Well, we also had Kinzo burned in the first game, so this it's is, not like is repetition true. is out of the question. This is true. Shut up, I can see right through you! Someone stop them, I'll still be killed! Someone stop them, God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is brilliant. Someone stop them, what if they get murdered by a psychopath? There was no way that Battler's voice or scream would reach Rosa or Maria. The two of them could be seen in the Rose Garden. The rain was still awful, but fortunately the wind had died down a little. No, maybe that wasn't fortunate. 
Because maybe if the wind had been a little fiercer, Rosa might have hesitated to go outside. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Here it is! Maria found her rose with the gold lace and stared at it lovingly. Rosa had accepted the promise under the condition that Maria would only get one look at it. But she didn't want Maria to complain that it hadn't been enough later on, so she decided to go along with Maria until she was satisfied. She believed that there wasn't a culprit. But on the off chance that she was mistaken, they were now in an extremely dangerous position. Rosa realized that faintly herself. If things got bad, she would throw away her umbrella and ready her gun. I was gonna say, they didn't have a mention of taking an umbrella, so I'm glad they covered this. Yeah. I'm glad this isn't a repeat of <laughs> dress shoes on the beach. <laughs> well, they disappear halfway through the scene, yeah. After glancing at Maria's innocent happiness, Rosa gazed warily in all directions. Oh boy. Who could it be? Were her eyes just tired? Even though no one should have been there, she thought she saw something glitter in the dark rose garden. Gold colored? It had to be her imagination. Because to Rosa, it seemed as though gold butterflies were dancing through the rose bushes. What music selection are we going with this time? I am excited to find out. I am also very interested that if supposedly the epitaph has already been solved, why are the murders still happening? It's a great question. Are you okay, Eva? Just take it easy. Should I call Dr. Nanjo after all? I'm fine. Don't take your hand away. I'm begging you, don't take your hand away. Eva was breathing wildly. It started with the wrong voice there. It's okay. Beads of sweat were appearing on her forehead. Oh my god, she's about to kill them with her magic. It certainly was true that she had set up all night last last night, and that things had been rough since early this morning. It wasn't odd that her body wasn't keeping up, even though he understood that. Hideyoshi suspected that this sudden fever was the sign of some serious illness. Several times, Hideyoshi decided to call for Dr. Nanjo, but Eva resisted firmly, pleading with him and saying that it was even more important that he didn't take his hand away. I understand, but you've got to have Dr. Nanjo look at you by lunchtime. If you can promise me that, I'll stay here the whole time, gripping your hand. Tightly, like this. Thank you, I'm fine. The magic of your hand will definitely take this fever away. Even as she said that, it was harsh breathing didn't improve in the slightest. Oh my god, is she like trying to like hold in her younger self right now? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Don't let go. Don't let go. <laughs> oh my god, it is. Where is it? Who is it? She saw an umbrella moving from beyond the rose bush. Rosa threw away her umbrella and wildly lifted her gun. When she did, the shadow of a person beyond the bush showed itself. Who? Aunt Ava? Uh... You've scared me. It's you, Nesan. Do you have some business with me? Do you want to continue our earlier discussion? She's in two places at once! <laughs> yes, that's right. Our discussion about Father's Gold. Please, restrain yourself in front of Maria. I'll keep my promise, okay? I won't get in the way of your conspiracy. Conspiracy? What's that? Whatever you're thinking, that's up to you. I have no desire to get in the way, so please, not in front of Maria. As long as I get my share, that will be enough. Your share? <laughs> I don't think I need to read that bit. No, you do. Ava started laughing in a creepy voice. Please. <laughs> Perfect. Rosa was startled, but Maria said blankly. Then Maria said just one thing. Who? Auntie, who are you? Your share. Who would give that to you? All of that is mine. It all belongs to me, the golden witch. Beatrice. Oh! Ava, are you okay? Ava! Ava, Ava! Hold on, don't let go! Don't let me be dragged away by someone who isn't me! Hold on to my hand! Don't let go! What is happening? When did you ever work hard? You never worked hard for anything! You are always hiding in our shadows! Is escape from the shadow to shadow without fighting, and yet you really think yourself qualified to make the demands of me over the Ashumia family gold? That is mine! It's all mine! Alone, as well as the 
headship of the Ashuramia family and the new golden witch successor to the name of Beatrice. Beatrice? It's Beatrice, Mama Beatrice! Maria jumped at her mother in ecstasy. Rosa treated Maria cold-heartedly and raised her gun high. Hey, you're Nason, right? You're Nason, aren't you? Wrong. I am no longer the one who is your sister. Then who are you? You're trying to say you're Beatrice? It's impossible. You died 19 years ago. So you were definitely dead. After all, I clearly saw your head was split open. I can remember the insides flowing out like it was yesterday. Can you be alive in here right now? The concept of death does not exist to a golden witch. The golden witch of the name Beatrice will be handed down for all eternity. Maybe the Beatrice you knew met death. But that name is mine now. And therefore it's eternal. The concept of death does not exist for Beatrice. All I can see is that the gold is driving you mad. How pitiful, Nason, even though she's just like suddenly changed outfit in front of her and stuff. <laughs> Got a magical golden stuff, yeah. Come on, you know I'm not your sister anymore. Well then, as the new Beatrice, I have been tasked with my own resurrection ceremony. Run of me? What should I do? Hello. That is up to you. You already have the power to make whatever you think reality. You should go used to it once you've tried it out a little. <laughs> you worthless former sister. You should consider it an honor to have been selected as the first sacrifice I offer as a witch. In the second twilight, I'll tear the two close apart with my own hands. The first thing the new bitch was wished for. No, the first magic she tried to use was to surpass the limitations given to humans. In particular, gravity. She wanted to become fully aware of her transformation to a witch by being released from those shackles. As the witch and Rosa stayed as they were, the ground retreated all by itself into the distance below them. By now, their feet were no longer attached to the ground. Rosa finally realized that the earth wasn't retreating into the distance below them, but that she and the witch were being sucked up into the rainy sky. Ah! Wow, awesome! <laughs> For a human shackled to the ground by gravity, there is nothing more unnerving than having their feet stop sticking to the ground. However, to Beatrice, who, in becoming the new witch, had learned the joy of being released from gravity, it was enough to make her whole body shake with delight. Hey Rosa, you remember long ago when we were small and we used to talk about what it'd be like to become witches and fly around the sky? That dream has been granted, hasn't it? I became a real witch and granted it for you. Stop it, if this is a dream, then wake me up. You said it yourself. You said you flew through the sky in your dream. You also said you didn't want to wake up. You even got mad at me when I woke you up, right? Don't worry. This time you won't wake up, okay? <laughs> Dance with me in the vast rainy sky. Didn't we both wish we could fly like seagulls in the sky and escape the cramped and boring island of Rakenshima? I'll make that dream a reality for you. I really want to share this joy with you and no one else. I've seen this trip before. It's so fun, Rosa. It's so fun. Take a look below you. Look at how small our mansion is. I wonder how much time we spent in the place that small. But I am especially shocked at how cramped and tiny it is. So feel, enjoy, rejoice! The power we yearn for. The power to move through the sky at will. Come on, let's dance, Rosa. Through the rain, through the wind. Let's fly around like we're dancing. The lightning will shine on us and bless us. <laughs> it's so much fun. What a lovely, charming child. The witch and Rosa were like leaves fluttering around in a whirlwind. As the rain pounded upon every part of their bodies, as the lightning occasionally shone upon them, they shook with the joy of being released from the ground. However, it was only that way for the witch. Rosa was holding onto her head, voicelessly screaming over and over. Stop it! Forgive me, let me down! You're right, it's more fitting for humans to crawl on the ground. Why not go back there? Yep. A slightly displeased expression rose to the witch's face when she realized that her own joy was not being shared. Then she decided to listen to her former sister's request! Here we go, it's gravity on time, boy. Here we go! Splat! <laughs> Ooh. The whirlwind that had been making Rosa dance around grew weaker, then stopped. 
In other words, Rosa was once again bound by the restrictions of gravity as a human. Following the laws that were originally correct, Rosa began to descend towards the ground upside down. No, she began to fall. Oops. That's right, if I don't take it down the right way, this is what happens. Ooh. The witch hadn't intended to send Rosa plummeting. But she was gonna kill her. But she still wasn't used to using magic. It was an accident. Don't worry, it's fine. It, uh, she just... Whoops a daisy. After plummeting about 100 meters into a rose bush, there's a very, very natural result. Fuck you, Ryukishi. I hate when you use that turn. Uh, Rosa died That's instantly. That's rude, Ben. I hate it. Is it is a very natural result. It is a very natural result, isn't it, for being dropped 100 meters in from the sky to the ground and then dying. Instantly. Never mind Maria, though. <laughs> but the witch had intended to kill but her. But she did. She didn't mean to. Look, don't blame Ava Beatrice. Don't, don't, don't blame her. So she wished that Rosa hadn't died. Look, it's fine. It's totally fine. When she did, God butterflies curled around about Rosa's body, reviving that life just as the witch had wished. See, she can just bring her back. It's fine. Rosa's body, which should have been spread out like a carpet of fresh blood, rapidly returned to normal. The broken and crushed bones returned to normal. The torn and smashed flesh returned to normal. How easy it is to break things in this world and how difficult it is to fix them. Anyone can take a life. But no human can revive a lost life. By surpassing the irreversible, one proves that they have surpassed humanity. This surely gave her a much, much greater realization of her position as a witch than flying through the sky had. Awesome! I can even revive an ended life! Of course. Better surmise the endless witch. To live and to die. To bring to life and to kill, or live it repeated endlessly. Better Samar, the endless witch, is the queen who controls the cycle of life and death. <laughs> One time I knocked over a fishbowl. Fragile and beautiful bowl broke and couldn't put back together again. I'd never see that cute pompeyed goldfish swim again after it landed on the floor. Ooh. No matter how much I cried, the servants shook their heads saying that broken things and dead things could never be revived. That's when I learned something. You must not break things, you must not kill people. After all, you can't fix them. So if you can fix them, you won't get into trouble for breaking them, right? <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm gonna cackle out of you yet. You for a will. while, the witch became intoxicated with how terrible and wonderful the power she had inherited was. Her laugh was pure, innocent, and cruel. There's some descriptions I would... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean... Obviously, the Although natural succession once. to pure and innocent is cruel. Cruel, yeah. I believe this is Rosa. <sighs> yeah. It's not a good time. Even though Rosa had been revived, she let out a cry of anguish at the pain from her fall. At that point, the witch landed and held out her hand. <laughs> sorry about that, Rosa. I didn't think flying in the sky would be so much fun. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I didn't know humans could die so easily. And I brought you back to life, so we're even. So get up, okay? Play with me some more, okay? <laughs> what were those dreams you told me about when you were a kid? Go ahead and tell me all of them without holding back. As I am now, I can make anything come true, no matter how absurd. Even drowning you in a sea of jelly, even having you get sucked into a mountain of cake, even make you sprout butterfly wings and flit around the garden, okay? And then one after another, let's start with the ocean of jelly, alright? <laughs> Stop it! Uh. Oh, Beatrice. Rosa was once again thrown high into the rainy sky. However, the sky wasn't filled with raindrops, but with drops of orange juice. When she looked down, Rosa had to doubt her eyes. The rose garden had disappeared and the ground spread out beneath her was like a pastel-colored jigsaw puzzle. It was an ocean of jelly, like the one she had spoken of from her dreams when she was young. The black part was coffee jelly. The red was strawberry. The yellow was pineapple. And the green was melon. What was the white part? Apple? Did Rosa even have the time to think stuff like that? Rosa fell towards that multicolored ocean. And splush. She sunk deep into a purple, grape-flavored sea. Shocked. <laughs> it really was an ocean of jelly. It had no bottom. As Rosa sank, she was shocked to see a school of transparent fish swimming through the great jelly ocean. They were probably made of grape skin. And she sunk on and on, deeper and deeper, as deep as the Marianas Trench, crushed by the water pressure of the jelly ocean, as her ribs snapped and her spine snapped. 
In the end, she became a small, frail meatball. <laughs> Unfortunate, but it was only natural, I'm sure. <laughs> what a truly wonderful experience to drown in an ocean of jelly! It's a dream no one else can imitate. I made it come true for you. <laughs> Instant I snapped my fingers, the meatball that had been frozen was launched up into the sky. After being wrapped up in a golden sparkle, she returned to her original form. Simple and as easy as returning dried seaweed to its original form, anyone could do it. They were a witch, like me. That absent-minded look on Rosa's face it has to be the joy from having that dream she gave up on as a child come true. Definitely. Probably. Next is the mountain of cake. In an instant, the sky was covered and became black and white in the shape of a chess... Oh, you want me to say this? Board. That almost transparent white part was her favorite rare cheesecake. The elegant black part was a slightly bitter gâteau au chocolat. I think. Is, yeah, that, uh, is that a is that a cake cat? Gâteau is that, au chocolat. I don't know. Is that a cake cat? Is that what we just have? I don't know. We have sea cats. Now we have cake cats. I guess so. What? That became the ceiling. It became a mountain, and several billion cakes were thrown down towards Rosa. I'm fairly certain gâteau is the word for cat. Gâteau. Yes. Is that chateau? No, that's house. Well, Unless find out. Gato is... I don't think Gato is, is cat. Anyway, <laughs> we gave several uh, cakes. Emergency. No! Search. What are you doing in the middle of the sea? I can't. Oh my god! Give me the space bar. If you pile those cakes up, they would surely be taller than Mount Everest. So they probably weighed. I'm not too sure, but I'll bet it was heavier than all the cakes across Japan put together. Oh, it's actually a word for cake in English. Oh, there you go. Uh, and there's the blood. It fell down like a ceiling and swallowed Rosa up, so as a very, very natural result, Rosa was crushed to death. They did it again. In less than a second, her bones broke throughout her body and her insides were all smashed and forced out. Squish, pop, slop. Even so, an even greater number of cakes piled up on top, and Rosa ended up as a layer of jam wedged between them. <laughs> She became as thin as a single hair, was probably spread out over the area of a tennis court. You're quite right, it is sh it is C H A T. Fucking nailed it. That it's word right. swallowed up by cake it's was once again absorbed by a golden flash. It's only been many years since I've ever studied French. Same, I did Latin in high school, so. Then, as though it had all been a dream, Rosa was revived once again. Of course, it definitely wasn't a dream. She had been revived after dying. By that point, death, which most humans only have to experience once after they are born, had already been experienced repeatedly by Rosa. In other words, she had gone through that which humans cannot. The precious thank, experience thank of goodness dying- Thank this is happening to Rosa again. Yeah. The precious experience of dying more than once. <laughs> you need to work on your witch laugh. I really do. The problem is, is when I try laugh that high pitch, that just like, I just choke on the air. Like, I just can't go You might further. need to shuffle your voice a little bit, if you wanna- Cause look, I want that- I want that laugh. I want that sick laugh. Isn't this fun, Rosa? Isn't this fun? Next is the butterflies. Look! Please have mercy. Oh. Uh. No way! Let's play more! Let's play more! <laughs> <laughs> Laughing innocently, she pointed her gold staff at Rosa. She begged for mercy. When she did, Rosa glittered gold and rapidly began to shrink. Oh, wonderful. She shrank down to the size of a real butterfly. Then gold wings sprouted from her back and she joined her fellow golden butterflies. However, while a human body could withstand that wind, it was a different matter for a butterfly's body. The gold butterfly Rosa was invited to dance by each gale of wind as she spun in circles around the rose garden. Uh, uh, uh. As her dance wore her out, she was caught by a gentle bed. It was a soft knit hammock in the shadows beneath the roof of the arbor. The owner of that hammock lumbered into view welcoming its rare guests who had wandered in on the night of the storm. That owner, which should have been small enough to crush in the palm of your hand, now looked as big as the top of a canopy bed to Rosa. Uh! Not particularly pleasant. <laughs> what a clutch, you got caught in a spider's web! <laughs> this time it's a dance with a spider! It takes me back. Most of the times you'd find a spider's web and play around by throwing pebbles at it, I heard the spiders don't chew their prey. They set their venom, and when the insides melt into a sticky soup, they suck them out. Ooh. Hey, Rosa, remember? 
Remember how we'd throw butterflies into the spider's web on purpose and play around by seeing how the spider would attack? <laughs> she's, look, she's a cruel... I think that the point is she's a very cruel individual and innocent and pure. She's enjoying herself though, this so it's fine. before you got into grade school. Yeah. Oh my god, it's no wonder she abuses George. Mm. Make sure you watch closely this time, okay? Very closely. <laughs> Better. And like, I just run I out of air. I give it a seven out of ten. I just ten. run out of air so quick. Oh, have mercy. Nesa, help me. Nesa. And she's dead again. What is that? Goblage. Let's go. Goblage. Mogia. Gaga. You boy. You boy. Oh my god. We're making a lot of light of this poor woman's death. What do you oh, want me to do? Multiple deaths. This girl's not bad. She truly can use magic at will. <laughs> amusing, amusing. How truly amusing. You feel like laughing too, right? Bad <laughs> Don't fuck with me. Stop it already. It's so fun. You're insane. You're insane. <laughs> What's so fun about doing something like this? Doesn't she look like she's having a blast? What do you expect? Magic is fun. I remember when I first became able to use magic. I played around a lot. Ah, I understand. I understand. I understand that kind of game from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Looks like I won't be able to share this joy and passion with you, Battler. Ah, oh, what a shame. What a shame. <laughs> if you accept me, I'll teach you magic anytime you want, see? It's hard to describe the joy you receive in the instant you're freed from the shackles of humanity. <laughs> I want to teach you about it, that joy, that passion. I'd definitely like to see the world of magic you give birth to just once. Ski! Yeah! Isn't this starting to get fun? You started wanting to use magic, haven't you? It's pretty fun to be a witch, isn't it? Just for you, I'll teach you everything about the joy of flying together in the sky, about the joy of diving together through the sea. I want to show you the passion that starts, the instance you surpass, the bounds of humans, and see how wide your world stretches. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> there was no mis no malice. malice. There was no malice in Beto's expression. It was hard to believe, but she was genuinely enjoying this cool show. And she wanted to share that appreciation with Battler. Battler was shocked by that hopelessly different sense of values. You're insane. Stop it already. Damn it. Gilly, make them stop this insane farce. What should I do? He's just outside of the board. We cannot touch the board itself. Megillio shook her head apologetically. Her body had already been killed. Did that mean she couldn't interfere in any way? I think that might be Battler. As Beatrice continued to look amused in an insane sort of way, Battler lifted her up by the collar and yelled at her. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Quit messing around, witch! Are you trying to tell me that's Aunt Eva? It's impossible! Whatever I know might be a bit mean at times, but it's completely impossible she's the kind of person who do something this cruel. I don't know, have you seen the way she treats George in episode one? Oh my god, you won't let this go. It's all part of your deception. Don't toy with Aunt Rosa. Don't toy with Aunt Eva. Stop this farce right now. <laughs> I told you, I'm not the one playing with Rosa anymore. Like I said, that's the new Beatrice. <laughs> Is it really so terrible that you have to squeal like that? You're also pretty fond of stuff like this, aren't you? Just occurred to me mm, that yes, bad luck. someone else becoming Beatrice is <laughs> Beato's way of getting around her goofing up with the 18 person <laughs> thing. Oh, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> My. That's quite the theory. Wait, is this you? Yeah. I just said that line. You actually have just a little bit of interest in magic and- Ouch! What, what are you doing? For the first time, Atlas slapped Beatrice's cheek. Beatrice didn't know why he had done something like that to her, and a surprised expression rose to her face. Battler especially couldn't forgive that expression, and he roared. Ah! You call this amusing? What's wrong with your head? Die! Go slice your head to bits and look inside and see there's nothing there! Stop it right now! Stop this disgusting farce! I won't forgive you! How could you do something so cruel? I sometimes thought you could be a bit funny, but I'll never make that mistake again! You're just a monster who's cruel on all levels. Show yourself in front of me. Never again. I won't accept you. I won't talk with you. I don't even want to look at your face. Did you hear me? Don't show yourself in front of me. 
disappear! Did... The instant Betla screamed, the power that resisted the witch became a red wall and knocked Beato back onto her butt. Oh my god. We saw this earlier. Yeah, that was got weird anti-magic powers. Oh, what are you talking about? Isn't it an interesting show? I... She spoke defensively, but the target of those words, Battler, was no longer there. His figure had suddenly disappeared into the darkness. But Beatrice looked displeased and continued trying to explain herself. I it's not as though I'm completely blind to where you're coming from, but this is nothing more than an innocent prank, isn't it? No matter how you kill them, they'll, they'll always be brought back to life in the end, right? I thought humans were creatures who say all's well that ends well. Uh, hey, teacher, there was no reason for him to get so angry, right? She was hoping for approval, but Vigilia simply faced her with an indifferent expression. To bear to at that moment, even an exasperated look would probably have been better. I have nothing in particular to say. If you think this is fun, you can keep watching as long as you want. Call me when it's over. I will vanish until then. Following Battler's lead, Vigilia vanished into the darkness. Beato, who was now completely isolated and didn't have a clue what was going on, felt that they were making her out to be the bad guy. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. What do you mean I'm the bad guy? I'm not the antagonist. I'm just having a bit of fun. What's wrong? Isn't it an amusing show? It, it, it might be a little vulgar, but it's quite interesting, isn't it? Hey, Ronave, it's nothing to get so mad about, right? Something interesting you for you, my lady. May not necessarily be interesting for a battler summer. <laughs> Does he really hate me that much? Well, certainly we are enemies and opponents in this competition. But is our relationship really so bad that we can't laugh together at this display? Since I applauded together with battler, I thought I could at least laugh together with him. Does he really reject me so much that we can't even do that? I cannot look in your direction right now. <laughs> this performance is too good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he doesn't have to accept that I'm a witch. We're challenging each other in this game after all. And yet, he won't look at my face. He won't talk to me. And he'll probably do all he can to ignore me. Am I really hated that much? <laughs> the moves you've made up to this point have been more than enough to earn his hatred. Even the demons such as myself can understand a bit of Battle of Samar's feelings. Perhaps you cannot understand because you're especially the kid lady. <laughs> wow! She's crying! And he's laughing at her! I want to see the tears no, in your images. No! Oh, uh, it's... It's not actually there at all. Give her the old... This is why we sing with the old sprites. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Why don't you disappear too? Yes, certainly. Then, if you'd excuse me. <laughs> Bye! Oh. Even Renove hid himself in the darkness and Beatrice was left alone. The only one in the rainy rose garden. No one ever plays with the lonely witch. And the fact that no one ever does is what makes them a lonely witch. Hmm. What's going on? Why won't anyone play with me? Am I really that weird, that cruel? Someone answer me! <laughs> Isn't this fun, Rose? Isn't this fun? Hey, how should we play next? Of course we should play with Maria too, right? Oh god. Let's all have a friendly walk together, okay? Let's swim in a pot of boiling chocolate. Let's have a picnic in cake in a cake rising oven. <laughs> Watch better. Give it a eight. Hey, hey, new Beatrice. Oh my god. Behind the witch that was continuing her mad banquet. I know, this is great. <laughs> Stop laughing like that, oh my god. <laughs> Behind the witch that was continuing her mad banquet, Beatrice showed herself. That expression was very rare for her. It was somehow restrained, unreliable, miserable. Oh, it's the predecessor of Beatrice Summer. Were you watching? Oh, God. The heart of magic is truly wonderful. Until now, I never thought it'd be so fun to be reborn as a witch. It's like playtime that never ends. Come on, let's play together, predecessor Summer. But first, wait for a second, okay? I cooked the two of them to death in an oven, so I have to revive them again. Uh... They're like bread rising from yeast. Like cookies expanding in an oven. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, here's the thing, before you continue. Okay, yes. I love that this is like, either, this is Beatrice being like, oh, okay, I'm, okay, and like, actually looking for advice, but here's two things. Is that yeah, I'm if, waiting, I'm waiting for it. If this Beatrice is her creation, yeah, she's talking to something that she's made for advice. Okay. Alternatively, 
This is all a ploy. <laughs> I like that you're thinking that way. And I love it either way. <laughs> I'm so excited to see how this story goes. L listen to what I'm saying. Um, well, is isn't that enough for the sacrifice of the, s the second twilight? Of course, there are no rules regarding how you kill them, but, uh, um, maybe you shouldn't toy with them any more than that. What are you saying, predecessor Samar? You heard from Rona Bay a short while ago. Wasn't your magic much, much more wonderful, cruel, and crazy? Halloween party where candies poured out of six people's stomachs was truly wonderful. Amazing. So maybe I'll act out Alice's tea party. You're such a role I'll invite model. everyone to a tea party in celebration of a completely pointless day and entertain them one by one with my magic. I wonder if I can do it as wonderfully as you. I wonder if I can be cruel in my own pop cute style. Mm. Now that I think about it, all fairy tales are cruel, aren't they? Now that I'm a witch inside one of those fairy tales, I finally understand. <laughs> 8.5. I have also, um, sometimes thought that in, in the past, I might have gone a little too far. Can we just, far. like, animate scorecards <laughs> in the edit? I might, please. <laughs> I, I might have gone a little too far. Um, well, I I think that it's, as the Golden Witch, it's probably best to show a little elegance. <laughs> that blank <laughs> face. Like, what? Uh, elegance? I don't get what you're saying, predecessor Summer. But there's one thing I do understand. No matter how hard I try, I'm no match for how cool you are. I've got to try. <laughs> I've got to try much, much harder. Uh, I've got to become more cruel and be, become an excellent go- Fuck, I can't. <laughs> like, like I said, you've already done enough here. This is so anyway, beautiful. I love this scene. This, <laughs> this is an order for me as your predecessor. That's enough for the second twilight. I'll, I'll show you how it's done. Stand back and watch. Yes, predecessor Summer. Wait to see what brutal, cruel, and disgusting uh, methods of killing you use. I love that now it's Beatrice trying to be the teacher know, to Ava. It's like, so uh, good. <laughs> it's so good! The new witch grasped the sides of her skirt and gave a graceful bow. Stepping back as an expected gaze rose to her face. She was expecting an even more cruel magic that surpassed even herself. Well, speaking of that, you're only half a witch if you could only kill with methods like that. I shall show you an elegant way to kill, worthy of the Golden Witch. <clears throat> ah. And Beato waved her pipe. Seven colors of smoke poured out, reviving Rosa Maria. Compared to how the new Beatrice had done it a short while ago, it was slightly gentler. It was probably gentler than how Beato had done it herself up until now. Rosa's consciousness had already grown dim from the pain of so many repeated deaths, but even so, she pleaded that her daughter be spared. Please, have a mercy, even if it's just Maria, have a mercy. Uh, Mama! Mama! Sorry. My disciple just, um, acted without restraint for a bit. Um, uh, forgive me. Be Beatrice! <laughs> when Maria realized it was the real Beatrice, she jumped onto her. You promised, right, Beato? You promised you'd take me to the Golden Land, right? There, I'll be friendly with Mama. And everyone will laugh together. You promise you take me there, right? A about that, I, I can no longer keep that promise. Because someone appeared who could solve the riddle, I am no longer the Golden Witch Beatrice. Um, so, sorry. I can no longer keep my promise with you. Why? Why? You promised! I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm truly sorry. So at least, an apology for not being able to keep my promise. I'll give you a quiet sleep that will never be disturbed again. Bear to embrace Maria with a loving expression on her face. Then, softly, a red bruise appeared on Maria's neck. It was a very gentle bruise. Its redness grew bit by bit, and when it distinctly formed itself into the shape of a hand, Maria's neck tilted suddenly, peacefully, as though... She had fallen asleep. Maria! Maria! Sorry, I won't apologize that you were the sacrifice of the second twilight. That is simply your fate. However, I must apologize for the vulgar way in which you are offered the sacrifices. This is your final sleep. Never again will it be disturbed. Beatrice softly, gently lifted her finger as though touching the empty air in front of her nose. When she did, a light breeze lifted up, making Rose's body dance lightly like a feather. Then Rose's body floated softly, 
And right there was a garden fence with its spear-shaped prongs. Okay. Yeah. The spear of the fence pierced Rose's medulla oblongata, but evidently without toying with her in a single blow. Rose's life was snapped out. Compared to their earlier innocent yet cruel events, it seemed to be over much too fast. It just looked like a doll shaped like Rosa was leaning against the fence, but she had passed away. Well, something like that should do the trick. Berta acted proud, but the new witch wore a blank expression almost as though this was an anticlimax. Then she said it out loud. It's kind of plain. Not at all like the predecessor somebody Rene re told me about. Well, you. Must use magic with dignity, right? It's too, um, undignified. That isn't very elegant. Uh, even though you're lucky enough to have the magic to do wonderful things endlessly. How boring. Hey, don't complain. The path of the Golden Witch cannot be completed in a day. You're still incomplete until you finish the Tenth Twilight. For now, stay quiet and follow my instructions. Got it? Uh, uh. What happened to your answer? Your answer! Uh, uh. Sure. Oh, very well, that, that will do. Well, there is still much to do for the resurrection ceremony. You still have to kill five people. Uh, you should do it without toying with them too much, with beauty and dignity, and with at least a little restraint, o okay? Um, what I anyway told you about how I did it, that was a bad example. <laughs> you mustn't use that as a model. Um, engrave that into your heart. Interesting quote. Yeah, engrave that into your heart. Yes, predecessors, Emma. A good answer. <sighs> Renove, the seven stakes of purgatory, arise. Yes, milady. I, Renove, am here. Lucifer of Pride, right here. Up until this point, um, I've, I've been a little flashy, but, um, well, the dignity of the Golden Witch is also important, and uh, about that, as Renove laughed at Beatrice's uncharacteristically flustered speech, he summed it up for her. Certainly. From now on, we'll be careful not to, to act in a graceful manner, Suit up over the name of the Golden Witch. Even the Seven Sisters of Purgatory will reform their bad behavior up until now. And we shall espouse to perform our task in the quickest possible manner. Will that be acceptable, my la lady? I indeed. That's it, more or less. Everyone, take it to heart. O okay? Yes, mm. certainly. Good. That is all I wish to say. You may leave now. Certainly. If you would excuse me. Excuse us. Uh. Well, that's all I want to say. So take care as you move forward. Understand? Act with dignity and um, restraint, okay? <laughs> Give it your all. I will be watching over you. Acting awkwardly until the very end, Beata left that message and immediately became a cloud of gold butterflies, hiding her form in the empty air. We're almost at the end of the scene. Oh, so great. I know, it's fantastic. Maybe it'd be more accurate to say she vanished in a hurry because she couldn't keep up the conversation. After all, uh, after that rather, all that remained was Maria's corpse lying down and pounded by the rain. Rose's corpse propped up by the fence and staring up at the sky and the figure of the witch. Show some restraint, you say. Her expression looked just a little bored. There was a popping sound. That was probably her clicking her tongue. What a boring... Person. You take that back! You bastard! Shh, shh, shh. Leaving that last sentence behind. She once again vanished into the empty air. Oh, what the fuck? That was so great. <laughs> I, I love that. Beatrice, I just want to hug you. It's better uh, now, right? I know, it's better. What am I talking about? Oh, that is so good. Beto, I just want to hug you. <laughs> she was like tearing up, and I was like, ah! Stop it! I know you're the antagonist, but I love you. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so happy with that scene. Uh, I can't. I can't explain to you Here's how much- Here's the other thing oh. I'm happy about, though, right? What? Is that as well as it being like Beardo being flustered and overwhelmed, just being absolutely wonderful to experience. <laughs> also, at this point, we kind of have confirmation that Ava's like physical form in the story that Beardo's telling, yeah, is separate from her witch form. 
Yeah, well, it's not necessarily Tai because we saw that Ava was uh, with Hideyoshi with the hand thing. Yeah, it was um, almost like Ava was trying to get Hideyoshi to like stop it from happening. Yeah, maybe whether or not Hideyoshi succeeded is perhaps up for some debate. I guess. Yeah, it's still. Um, I mean, I guess we'll see how the crime scene actually is before we start making yeah, any theories about this. That was going to show up, but I think for sure uh, that has eased a lot of my anxiety about what the implications of Ava being the witch yeah. are. I think I think it's okay to to talk about Ava as a as Beatrice. It's very strange, but I look forward to what you'll bring to the table as the new innocent, cute, cruel witch. Jesus, it's a little boring. 